this name has fed in social media recently. It describes the horrible reality we all live in. But the most surprising about this reality is the question it heals. Have you ever thought that your home can heal you? Yes, the home in which you're supposed to feel safe and protected, the home uh, which is supposed to be your fortress. Uh, I started thinking about this last year when I read an article about green sustainable building, and uh, I discovered that most of us live in pillar houses. Uh, the most, it is even more dramatic that the homes are not the only problem. For example, have you ever thought that your well-equipped, comfortable office you work in every day can actually harm you? Have you ever feared to let your children go to school because you might come with a lens full of toxins from the school building? Have you ever thought about the fact that the environment in your cafe can actually harm you? Your home, your office, the school you go or send your child to, even the green cafe around the corner of your block is called green merely because it has four or five plants more than the usual cafe. All of these places are accepted. All of these places are injected with toxins from the air, which damages our health. All of these places are equipped with technology and devices which damage the environment around us. But I want to explain this on the example of my home country, Georgia, which is so different from the European perspective. I want to recall former Prime Minister Zurab Zwanya's famous phrase and say, I'm Georgian, therefore I'm European. But you will all agree that Georgia doesn't satisfy European architectural and construction standards. There is a horrible, horrible situation in those two fields. Chaotic and I would say ugly buildings are all over, not only in Tbilisi, but other cities as well. For instance, the urbanization and development of my home country, Batumi, home city Batumi, is unsystematic and unorganized. But every coin has two sides. On the one hand, we understand that there is a problem with the lack of housing and we want to build as much as possible. On the, on the other hand, we do not pay attention where, how, and what kind of buildings we build. We do not take risks into consideration, which causes Batumi losing its beauty, or, as I already mentioned, my city kills me. Now I would like to explain what I mean when I say what kind of buildings we build. Of course, I primarily mean the size and the shape of the building because these are the least important characteristics for the building. What I mean in what kind is how sustainable and green the building is. Uh, exactly a year ago, just like you, I had no idea what sustainable building meant. I didn't know how it looked. Uh, if I had to compare the building built during the Soviet Union with the demonstrated model in next to the Italy, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to find the difference. But my project gave me reason and opportunity to read and investigate hundreds of pages about uh, green sustainable building. And thankfully, I found out this fascinating, new, and innovative uh, concept of green building. Uh, the re for this talk, I could choose any type of, uh, of building. But the one I would like to discuss is schools. Because I think if we want to change attitude and raise awareness towards the problem, uh, we should start with schools. The problems listed above can be clearly seen on the real life example of first public school in Shwakheri, uh, Georgia. As you can see in the photos, the conditions in which study process occurred are horrible. Broken windows, cracked walls, classes filled with toxic substances, wooden ovens, and believe me, I will need more than 10 minutes to list all of the problems. I don't want uh, sustainable, I don't want, you, I don't want to bore you with imagining sustainable in a school. Uh, I don't want it to only exist in your head, so I created the project specifically for Shahari School and made the demonstrative model. Let's take a look. I want to mention that this school is built by the concept of green building, so uh, it takes it considers three main goals of uh, green concept of green building. Global safety, healthy environment, and safety of local environment. I also want to mention that this project, uh, the, we really, in Georgia, we rarely have buildings built with green concept, uh, but as regards schools, there is no such school building. Therefore, this project is an innovation. Um, now, let's stop talking about the problems and get back to the main idea. So on 12th of March, I presented my seven month work to the uh, local authorities and the reply I got was that it is very interesting, we will look through it and use it. But in reality, they didn't do a thing. Uh, look at those pictures. Isn't it obvious why this is better than this? So 
these people had reason. These people had pro no, these people had project, and these people had resources. Why couldn't they change anything? I started thinking about this, and I soon realized that they were afraid of change. They were afraid of innovation. But this is this isn't news. Uh, even in history, we can see examples where people are afraid of change. They are afraid of innovation. But today, I have an example where people actually benefit from innovation. The Bridge of Leeds on Mississippi River at 520 feet between the piers. The center arc of its of bridge was the longest rigid spin ever created at the time of its construction. Extending 100 feet between, uh, below the water level, the foundation of its bridge was the deepest underwater construction at the time. These numbers are not uh, standard. This was the biggest and only bridge created by iron at that time. This was in a, an innovation. They were calling that it the world's eighth wonder. But people have to believe that this big construction could handle the big mass. So the author of the project, Andrew Carnegie, had to come up with a, uh, had to convince the public that the bridge was safe. So he came up with the craziest idea. On the opening day, he set a parade across the bridge, which was led by an elephant. Uh, by this, he convinced the public to follow the elephant. This innovation opened doors to the new industries like using iron as a material and construction industries. But the reason I brought this example are that uh, I realized that our the still I realized that our main problem still remains the, the, that the fear of innovation. I realized this when a 15-year-old boy me was standing in front of officials talking about implementing straw as a material and implementing between all the systems the whole school. But the reply I was got was smile. And the smile was saying, don't worry, you will grow up and realize that we don't want to leave our comfort zone. And we don't want to leave our comfort zone because as soon as we leave it, we'll get lost. But I say to you, we will not if our goals will be oriented on, different, on sustainable development. If I will know that my home provides safety and it is not killing me, of course, I'll be more comfortable in it. So I see the one thing we all need to realize, such innovations are nothing to be afraid of. They can give us much more. They can open doors of development to the different industries. They can, answer the, they can help to answer the question which have been there for a while. But most importantly, innovation can change us all. Thank you.